Blessings Church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, we're few in number, but uh, that's okay. Um, our God is an awesome God. Uh, we do have a handout. The you know the title of this ser sermon is the Advent, and uh, what does Advent mean? Is one of the questions. And everybody should know the answer to that. Yeah. So we are looking forward to Christ's return, obviously. But we know that that will be the end of all the troubles on this earth, except for the final uh, taking care of the wicked problem at the end of the thousand years. Um, but we're Seventh-day Adventists. You know, we're here on the Sabbath day to worship the Lord. Uh, he says, remember the Sabbath day. And, and uh, we praise God for that because he's promised to be here with us. And it's his Sabbath day. But Advent means a coming or arrival, especially of something infrequent or unusually important. So the name Seventh-day Adventism, it took him a while to come up with that name. You know, they weren't sure what we should be called. But Adventism, the Advent is the second coming of Christ. Uh, Adventism, the belief or doctrine that the expected second coming of Christ is near at hand. So, Hebrews 9.28 says, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You know, the question is, I mean, the first coming was Christ incarnate, right? You know, we celebrate Christmas, you know, in remembrance of that um, as a church. But the, uh, the second time is when... Christ returns, you know, from heaven, what's the third time that Christ will return to the earth? Is there a third time? Yeah, after the thousand years, the new city of Jerusalem will come down out of heaven, and Christ will, will, will bring it with us. So Acts 1-9, we read it. Now there's, there's a few things as we go through these now, I mean, the Word of God uh, gives us our doctrine and gives us our truth. And, you know, how well do we know this doctrine of the second coming? How well are we able to witness and to share that with somebody else? This is an opportunity. Now, we, the handout that we have basically has all the Bible texts that I'm going to use today. And, and keep that handout. Somebody ask you, you know, about your belief or about Adventism, what does that stand for? You know, you can pull that out and you can read that. You should read that five times, 10 times, 20 times. Every little aspect of it, I mean, is the, is the second coming of Christ pre-tribulation? Is it post-tribulation? You know, when, do we know when Jesus will come back? The answer is yes, the answer is no. But, Anyhow, as we go through it, we'll see some of these that we need to understand and know. So it says, Jesus is on the Mount of Olives, and all of a sudden he starts going where? He's taken up, the Bible says, in Acts 1-9. After he had spoken his last words to the apostles and those gathered around, uh, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. What is the cloud? Did he go up into the clouds? Was it something else? The angels came. You know, it, it, angels. We'll, we'll, as we go through, we'll read it specifically from Scripture. So as, they, as while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, also there was two angels there at that time. Two men stood by in white apparel. And the uh, white apparel gives it away that they are angels. But ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, shall so come in like manner you have seen him go into heaven. 
Now, when Christ comes back, there's a debate whether we're the left behind. That'll be that'll be there for Jesus. Those that are left or those that are taken. You know, Jesus himself was taken up. And I just like for you to just keep that in mind. Revelation 1 7 Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Uh, is Aurora going to see him? Alejandro, are you going to see Jesus when he comes? Every eye in the whole world is going to see our Lord return. Now, how can that be when some people are on one side of the earth and some people are on the other side of the earth? How is everybody going to see Jesus come? Any thoughts? It's everywhere. Well, it may be that we'll all just supernaturally, in a sense, be seeing him come. But if the coming does last more than 24 hours, that'll answer that question because, uh, you know, the earth will revolve for, you know, around for 24 hours and every, every eye will be able to see him come. But, you know, also then what's pierced him, you know, there, there may and is, the Bible suggests a, a special uh, resurrection for those that actually put him to death. But all kindreds of the earth shall wail. Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back for us. Why are people going to be wailing or crying and be unhappy? Because they're not just, they're not righteous, they're unjust. And they have sin in their hearts, and we'll talk about that. But the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. So that's where it talks about, and, and, and it does equate the cloud with, and this is why it does as well, as angels. How many angels is he coming back with? All of them. All the angels, Aurora says. Is that right? Eric, is that right? He's coming with all his angels? Absolutely. The silence in heaven for a half an hour. And... and, and the understanding is that all of heaven is emptied out and they're coming to this earth. So, but then this next part, it says then. Now we, we're looking for these type of words as we do in this study for, for the second coming. Then he shall reward every man according to his works. The popular idea is we go to sleep. I mean, you know, I mean, in Adventism, but in death, People think the soul, you know, wings its way off into heaven, and they're in heaven already. But if they receive that reward then, why does the Bible say, when he comes with all his angels, then he shall reward every man according to his works? And, and, and so, uh, as Adventists, we do believe that man is in the grave, and he's resting and waiting for the Lord to come. Now, there's a lot on this little slide, but there's just some points of emphasis that we want to make. You know, one of the main questions that people are concerned with uh, in evangelical Christians, uh, good morning, Ben, good to see you, uh, is whether that when Jesus returned, it's going to be pre-trib or post-trib. What are we talking about when we say pre-trib or post-trib? Pre-tribulation or post-tribulation? The seven last plagues, by definition, are, are really the, the last tribulation on this earth. And uh, so is he going to come back before the plagues or after the plagues? Now, right now, what are we in? We look around and we, we see, uh, you know, all the people that have passed away. We're talking about what, seven, eight million people in the world from COVID in the last couple of years? Um, I think we're at a point where we're in the, quote, little time of trouble before the big time of trouble, which is the seven last plagues. Once this starts and the angel starts loosening up, you know, the restraints to Satan in this world more and more disease, famine, chaos, war is going to happen. You know, we see 
people disregarding authority. And, and we'll, we'll see some of these in the book of Revelation here uh, toward the end of the sermon. But it says it's lightning. <coughs> Pray for my cough because I've had this for four weeks. You know, whenever before the other people got the COVID, my wife and I both had this. And uh, so I, I stepped out in faith by doing this today. So, But as lightning come from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man meet. Every eye will see, and it will be everywhere that you can see it's coming. But 24, 29, and let's repeat this together, the first three words. Uh, words. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give light, the stars shall fall from heaven, the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then, there's that word then again, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And the angels that are coming with Christ, what are they going to do? It says, he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. He, who carries the trumpet? This is why it is plainly said that a silver trumpet Christ will have. He will it'll sound that trumpet. So the sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. Uh, who's the elect? Uh, God's church, God, the, those that are saved, those that have Jesus in their heart, are the elect. And they're, the, the angels have gathered from the four winds, north, south, east, west, and from one end of heaven to the other, and 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 that's when Jesus comes back. So the angels have a particular role to play. But the key aspect of this is that it's after the tribulation. Now, I, I just want to say a word or two on the uh, pre-trib. Uh, you know, how Lindsay, as far back as 1970, wrote the book Left Behind series. And... Uh, from 1995 to 2007, there were 16 best-selling novels regarding the pre-trib rapture that were sold. And, and total sale of the books, uh, I mean the 10th book that was even came out, sold 65 million books. I mean the world is saturated with this belief of the pre-trib. And, and uh, but that the Christians themselves, because it's a secret coming of Christ, will be taken first, and then there will be a time where the rest of the people will have a second chance to, to, for salvation. So, uh, as Seventh-day Adventists, what do we believe? Do we believe, do we believe pre-trib? No. Absolutely not. We believe post-tribulation, Right before the beginning of the tribulation, Christ will put down the censer as our high priest. And again, uh, we'll put the seals on the forehead and the hands of God's people and also the wicked. And uh, I mean, the final seal is in the forehead, yes. The name of God is written on the forehead of God's people. But I believe, just like James says, I'll show you my faith by my works. God's people will have the works of righteousness uh, with them as well. And that's what, uh, what the hand represents. So these books are saturated. Uh, people believe that. And, <coughs> uh, you know, and it has to do with Christ and the Antichrist and all those things. And, and it's very important for us to understand the second coming of Christ and how he will come and, and what will happen. So that, that's why we're reviewing this. So after the tribulation, Jesus will come. The sign of the Son of Man in heaven. 
but the tribes of the earth will mourn. Those of the wicked will be mourning because they will feel the, the guilt and strain of sin within them. As soon as they see Christ, I mean, he will convict people to that effect. So again, Matthew 16, 27, very similar. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. So when do we get our crown? 1 Peter 5, 4, when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Uh, who would like to receive a golden crown? It's our understanding that Jesus himself will put that on each of his saints and, and bless us at that time and, you know, for being good and faithful servants. So the reward does not come until Jesus returns to this earth. And, and at that time, 2 Timothy 4.1, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing of his kingdom. Who's the quick? If you can move, you're the quick. <laughs> if you can move, those that are still alive, can you move? We can move. So we're still the quick. We're the living. But the dead, at a superior, shall be judged. The judgment is the day of atonement. That's the judgment that's going on right now. But those seals will be given, and then the seven plagues, and then he returns. We have to remember that sequence. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 15, 16. Now this has got to be one of my favorite Bible texts in the whole Bible. It's so wonderful. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Again, it's got to be what the word says, not what a novel says, a fiction writer says. It's got to be from the word itself of God. Uh, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So again, asleep means the first death. It's a temporary state. You know, you wake up from night in the morning, you're awake, and, and the same thing will happen in the morning is when Christ returns. And, and uh, uh, But there is a difference between the, the resurrection of the wicked and the righteous of a thousand years. Uh, but anyhow, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. And with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So when Jesus returns, the dead in Christ, those that have given their hearts to Jesus, will be raised from the dead. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and to meet the Lord in the air, and so, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So um, the dead rise first, so then as we... And I don't know if they proceed and start going up and then we start going up or they're resurrected and we all both just go up together. Either way, it's fine with me. The shout, what's the shout? I think it's Christ shouting to raise, I mean, for the, all the saints to be raised that are, that are passed away, that are dead. So he will shout. The voice of the archangel, again, archangel Michael means one who is like God, uh, and he is the leader of the angels, the head of the angels in, in, in heaven, that was Christ as well as here on this earth, and, and the leader of our church. Any questions or comments right now? Anybody confused? We okay? You got it, Aurora? Okay, good. First Thessalonians 5. You know, so First Thessalonians 4, 5. But of the times and seasons, brethren, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. What times and seasons? The precise time. There's no time to be set for Jesus' return. We're to see the, the seasons and understand the seasons by watching and praying. 
but we do not know the exact time. So for yourselves, know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as to veil upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. So Christ is going to come as a thief, meaning unexpectedly, at a time when they do not expect, when the world does not suspect. But God's people will not be in darkness. We will understand, we will know what is happening, and that it's imminent, and at any time Christ could return. And, and as we go through this, it will be, I believe it will become more and more apparent for that to happen. But they will say, peace and safety, it's okay. The world, the world is going to be okay. I mean, these things are going on. The, you know, I mean, we can look around at the earthquakes, the volcanoes, the, the hurricanes, you know, the fires that are going on, the plagues, uh, COVID, and so on. And, and these things are to become really essentially nonstop leading up to the time of Jesus Christ. They will be expanded. They will continue to happen. And, and what's going to find it finally uh, rally for the mark of the beast and all that? Uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But Second Thessalonians, Thessalonians is important about the second coming of Jesus Christ. You who are troubled, rest with us. Uh, you know, one of the hardest things to do sometimes, especially if we're surrounded with troubles and and, and worries is to be able to rest and what a special gift that is that, to, that the Lord can give us peace in our heart even when you know as we look around and see things happening uh, but it says when the, oh, <coughs> when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this statement is so important for us to understand. When Christ is coming down and with all his angels, I mean, he's not up there with some sort of spiritual weapons and zapping people, you know, as he's coming down. He's coming, what's the flaming fire represent? He's coming back with all, the G word, all glory. It's his glory. You know, when he came as a babe, his flesh veiled him. He did not come with all his uh, glory. And But when he comes back, he's coming back with that glory. And that glory uh, will consume sin and sinner. If, uh, if, if we have sin in our hearts. So what do we need to do? We need to have all our sin deposited in the sanctuary in heaven above where Jesus can have those sins. I mean, he died for those sins and he wants us to be able to live and be his. But the wicked will be consumed by that fire and the fire actually breaks out. You know, the very blood of this earth that so many people have died in war and, and, and murder and the things that have happened, the blood actually cries out to God and that earth has been contaminated even with the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When he comes back, he's coming back in perfection and glory and that earth is just going to pulsate. It's gonna, there's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be all kinds of things that will happen when he returns. But the wicked, who's, one nine, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So again, they're punished with the glory of his power. It's his holiness and righteousness that everybody is going to be afraid of. When he shall come to be glorified in the saints. So that same glory you know, glorifies us. So we're justified, we're sanctified in our lifetime, we're putting away the sin, 
with through the Holy Spirit. But then we will be glorified uh, and lifted up off this earth when Jesus comes. And uh, so when he shall come to be glorified in his saints, we give him glory by our belief, by our understanding of who he is and our great love for him. And to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So we have to trust this testimony the Old and the New Testaments. 2 Peter 3.30 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So there's that sneaky part that we're wondering, say, okay, is it a pre-trib? Is the church going to secretly be taken away out of this earth? And the answer is no. What happens when Jesus comes as a thief in the night? The heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. In Jeremiah and, and in Isaiah it talks about how to be no man. All the cities will be broken down. And, and we need to understand that. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what matter person ought ye to be? In all holy conversations, and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord where the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved very even the air is polluted and been you know made ugly it says the very elements shall melt with fervent heat but this part about looking for and hasting making it come sooner uh, I mean, what is God waiting for? He's waiting for that last person, you know, to accept him in their hearts. He's waiting for that last person to make that public demonstration that, hey, I'm yours. I, well, no matter what happens, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. If he goes into the holy part of the sanctuary, if he goes in the most holy, if he's coming here, we're going to be ready to meet him here. So looking for and hasting. John 5, 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all the graves shall hear his voice. So there's that voice, the voice of the archangel, which is actually Michael or Christ. And, uh, and the, the, you know, the righteous shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. But they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So again, the end of the seven last plagues. Now all sevens go to heaven. And so at the end of the seventh seal, at the end of the you know, the seven trumpets, at the end of the seven plagues, you know, it's it's all telling about this event of Christ coming. And 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 we need to understand that. So uh, but again at the end of the thousand years is when the wicked will be resurrected and, and I don't have that text on here right now, but 1 Corinthians 15. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You know, he's the way, the truth, and the life. But every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits. Christ was baptized even when he was on this earth. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross, was buried, he rose again and was resurrected. And he was the first fruits because he came out of the grove, he, the grave, and he conquered sin. He did not sin, he kept it perfectly. He fulfilled the obligations of the law, though, because he took our sins upon him and was crucified for our sins, and he died for each one of us. Christ the first fruits. Afterwards, they that are Christ that is coming. Now, he did go back to the Father with some people that he rose from the dead when at the time he rose from the dead. And he took them back to heaven. We don't know the names of any of those. Uh, but they even appeared in Jerusalem and to people of that time. Uh, but those were Christ, and he brought back those as his first fruits back to the Father. And But the final harvest. Is, is what we're talking about at the second coming. 
And then, when we're resurrected, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Now that doesn't, death isn't just destroyed at the time of Christ's return. That will take place uh, at the end of the thousand years with the execution of the final judgment of the wicked. 1 Corinthians 15, talking about the same event. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised. Now this is what's so beautiful that we, we all think about this. We shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be swallowed, brought to pass the saying that was written, death is swallowed up in victory. So for the righteous, death is swallowed up at this victory at the coming of Christ. Because we will never die at that point. Mortal puts on immortality. But man is mortal. Without God and his immortality given as a gift, we, will, we cannot be immortal. We are mortal and we will die. And we'll die the first death and we'll die the second death without Christ. So, but the corruptible, never again will we accidentally slip with some words that, you know, maybe we used when we were younger, earlier in our life. Or whatever, or, or whatever it is, we won't be doing those sins or anything anymore. Everything will be perfect and wonderful. But at the time of the second coming, the wicked will be revealed. And the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. What's the spirit of, God's, of Christ's mouth? The words that he has spoken. The words that are right here, everything written in this book will take place regarding the wicked and the righteous. The words that he has spoken and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So again, he doesn't have to step out of character to zap the wicked. He's manifesting his full glory. And that glory, the brightness, uh, of his coming, his coming is after, now this is the other aspect that we have to know, again, pre-trib, post-trib. Second Thessalonians 2.19, 9.29, I'm sorry, says Christ's coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. The second coming does not come before that, you know, and then you know, Satan is the last place after the church is raptured out early. It does not happen. His coming is after the working of Satan. And Satan's working with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. How simple this is. Receive the love of the truth. Receive it in our hearts. Give it, Lord, give us that gift of that Holy Spirit deep within our heart that will cement us, that will seal us as only you can seal us. May we love this truth. May we not be ashamed. If we're ashamed to shed, spread it or share it, God says that's a sign that you're not truly His. Job 14, 20. A man dieth and wasted away. This is again telling us when he's coming back. It's not setting a date on, you know, August 17, 2023. 2023 is going to come back. No. What he's saying is that we can understand pre trib, post trib, we can understand the signs of the times. Man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man, give, given up the ghost. I mean, he's, he's died. Where is he? So man lieth down, and he rises not till the heavens be no more. When are the heavens going to be no more? When Christ comes back with that glory, and, and everything starts convulsing because of all the sin and ugliness that is in this world. Uh, the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. <clears throat> so there's no secret rapture before the second coming of Christ. 
Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave. So Job is saying, hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. So again, after the seven last plagues, post-tribulation, Jesus is returning. They, and that thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. God knows the exact time he's coming back. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and there is a time. And if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait. I'm going to wait in the grave. And the next thing I know will be Jesus and his voice. And I'm coming forth to witness and to see and to be there. How wonderful that is. 2 Timothy 3. Can we know the signs of the times? I, I mean, we look around today, uh, and there's open sin. In the United States of America, you know, uh, a country that was blessed by God with all these wonderful gifts of, uh, you know, to freely worship and to, uh, you know, all the things, the freedoms that we are, are have enjoyed, but it says, but in the end time, the last days, perilous times, people be lovers of their own self, very proud. You know, this is who I am. I'm, I'm a guy today, but I'm a girl tomorrow. Uh, whatever it is, they're very proud, boasters, covetousness, lovers of their own self, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, uh, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. God is asking us to separate, to be a people unto himself, a special people, for the Lord. The second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, what have we learned? This is a quiz now. Bro, are you ready? Girls ready? Everybody wake up. I got some questions. When Jesus was taken up, where did he go? I can't hear what? He went to heaven. He was taken up into the clouds and the sky and the heaven. So so he did go in the atmosphere of heaven, but there's three heavens. The second heaven is through the all the planets and everything that have been created. And, but then the third heaven is where the throne of God is. Okay. Um, what did the clouds represent? Uh, Alejandro, what did the clouds represent? He's taken up into the clouds. Who's got the answer? Who's got the answer? The, the clouds are the, you, you answered it before, or who is it? What is it? The angels. He's come back with every angel in heaven. So the clouds are angels. So when he returns, how is he going to return? Same way he went. He's coming back with all his angels. And, and we'll see him in the clouds. It'll look like, uh, uh, you know, a light, you know, with the white around him. But as it gets closer, we'll plainly see Jesus Christ. How many people on earth are going to see Jesus when he comes? All of us will see. When he returns, he returns with all power and all what? Glory. It's not veiled any longer. You know, the flesh is the veil before, but now he's coming back and he's going to shine it's brighter than the sun. Brighter than the sun. What are the wicked going to try to do when Jesus returns? They will be destroyed, yeah. They, but they'll try to hide. They're going to try to hide in the caves. They're going to try to get away. They want to, just like, remember what Adam and Eve did when Jesus walked back into the garden after they had sinned? They were hiding in the trees back and they trying to cover themselves because they felt that guilt of what sin can bring. The wicked will have that. Uh, 
So they will mourn and try to hide. Uh, when Jesus returns, just a reminder, not a really a question, but that we are all judged just prior to that. And then, you know, it happens. All right, so Jesus is returning. We have the shout. What else do we have? We have the shout. We have the voice of the Lord, you know? The voice of the archangel. And what was the third one? The trumpet shall sound, All right? Very good. So, they, I always, you know, played the trumpet when there was something dramatic, you know, people coming to attack or whatever it was. Any any great proclamation, anything that had to gather all the people together, and that trumpet is it will Christ Himself will be playing that trumpet for you and me to gather us. What does it mean to come as a thief in the night? We don't know the exact time he's coming. So they will be saying peace and safety. Everything's okay. Oh, oh, this is what I didn't mention. Satan at that time, and this is so very important, will be the one that say, he says, it's okay. I've got, I can make this everything well again. I mean, it's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be the one that fixes everything. All you have to do is keep Sunday over Saturday. So that's going to be the main message. And, and uh, so Satan will deceive and people will think they're doing the right thing by listening to him because he will look like an angel of light. He's not going to look like a devil with a pitchfork and a tail, a red tail and stuff. He's going to look like a, somebody that is holy. And he's going to use words from Scripture, partial words, as he always does, to, to, to do that. So we are not to be deceived. Now this is the other aspect that we didn't talk about. If he's, if he's in the desert, or if he's on the Mount of Olives, wherever he's at, it's not Christ. Because again, Christ is coming in the air, and we're drawn up to him. He never sets his foot back on planet Earth. So we always have to remember that if there's a being that's appearing around the world or multiple in multiple places, it is Satan working to try to gather people into the mark of the beast thing. So any questions on that? What's the last enemy to be destroyed? Ben, what's the last enemy? Death is the last enemy to be destroyed. And that will come again at the second death. And death and hell are thrown into the lake of fire. And there's the cleansing fire with a new heavens and a new earth. So two things happen when Christ returns. The corruptible puts on what? Incorruptible. That means we're not ever going to do bad things again after that. We will be blessed with Christ in our hearts in a full, complete, never again will we sin from that point on. But mortal will put on what? Immortality. Immortality. Uh, what do the righteous people love? Caesar, what do the righteous people love? Think they'll love Jesus? I think they'll love Jesus, absolutely. But they're going to love, the love of the truth is going to be a sign. They're going to be able to stand on the Bible and the Bible alone because that is the words of God, Christ, given to us. This testimony is about Jesus and what he has told us. So the wickedly will continue to sin and get worse. Sin is going to get worse and worse and worse. Because the restraining arms of the angels are releasing and, and allowing this to happen uh, for a reason. And the seven last plagues, that is completely released and Satan has full control. And that's why they're the worst thing that there's been. Uh, so... 
how can we be sure? How can we be sure that it's Jesus coming? Again, he's coming in the clouds, in the air, right? And with all his angels, the dead in Christ rise. You know, this is such a beautiful picture, and I love that rainbow. When he comes and he's higher up in the air, and then around the throne, the rainbow goes completely around his whole throne. And uh, as he's coming, uh, it's my understanding the rainbow will be <coughs> around that as well. <coughs> All the people coming out of the graves, how great will be that time. So the second coming, the seventh day Adventists, we keep the seventh day holy and worship the Lord our God. And we're waiting for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to return because we love him and we keep his commandments in obedience to him. Amen. And we'll be, and we've given all of our sins, not part of them, all of our sins to him in the sanctuary of heaven, in the most holy, and he's taken his blood there to free us from the condemnation. There's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus. Amen. We need to rest in that. We need to be ready for him. We need to not be deceived. And there is no pre-trib rapture. There's post-trib coming of Jesus after the seven last plagues. How can we live through the seven last plagues? Supernaturally, God will be there with us with angels and keep us. We do not have to worry about them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Nobody will die. Nobody will die in the church during the seven last plagues. We'll all be brought through that. May the Lord bless us. Amen. Amen. Amen.